So this was a pop quiz which was related to ionic and covalent structures. In the first one, we have to complete a dot and cross diagram for sh to show the electron arrangement if in magnesium chloride. So first, what is the structure of magnesium uh, electronic configuration? It is 2A2. So first, I'll draw the atoms. Like the magnesium is first shell, it is having two. The second shell, it is having eight. And the third shell, it is having two. And for chlorine, the electronic configuration, that is two, eight, and seven. So first shell, it is having two, second shell, eight, and the third shell, it is having seven electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now what happened? Magnesium, as we know, the for an ionic bond, it's a transfer of electron from metal to non-metal. The metal tend to lose all the valence shell electrons. So first magnesium loses first electron to chlorine, and the magnesium loses a second electron to the second chlorine. So seven already belongs to chlorine. And one it took from magnesium. Each chlorine atom take one ele <coughs> electron from magnesium. So as a result, these two electrons are being lost. So what will be the charge? Because the magnesium is losing two electrons. So when magnesium is losing two electrons, what should be the charge in magnesium? So it will be plus two. And each chlorine gains one electron, so the charge will be minus one. And this is a ionic structure of magnesium chloride. And it's up to you. In, like example, if you draw the third shell empty, that's fine. If you remove this shell, that's also fine. So both ways it is correct, but the idea is that the magnesium should lose two electron and each chlorine gains one electron. Then we have to draw a dot and cross diagram for car uh, carbon dioxide. As we know, carbon dioxide contains oxygen and carbon. So oxygen, first we check the group number. So which group oxygen belongs to? What's the group number of oxygen? Yeah, that's right. So oxygen belongs to group six. So if, if it belongs to group six, how many electrons it should share? It should share two electrons. And how many unshared electrons should be there? So the unshared electrons will be four. So if oxygen share two, the carbon will share two from that side. Oxygen share two, carbon share two from that side. And carbon, as it belongs to group four, so group belongs to group four, group four will share four electron and unshared will be zero. So the sharing is done for carbon. For oxygen, unshared electrons we have to draw. So one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So this is a covalent structure of carbon dioxide, which is also known as CO2. The diagram shows a structure of hydrogen molecule draw an electron arrangement. So here, a single line represents a pair of electron. So we have nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Now there's a single line between nitrogen and hydrogen, so there must be a pair of electron between them. Then another single line is there, so means there must be a pair of electron. This also represented by a single line, so pair of electrons. And this also a pair of electron. Between the two nitrogen, also they have a single line, so means there will be a pair of electron between. But nitrogen, when we check the nitrogen, nitrogen belongs to group five. So if element belongs to group five to complete an octet, it share three electrons. Out of five, it share three, so unshared will be two. So it's important we draw the two unshared electrons for nitrogen. So each nitrogen will have two unshared electrons. So you can just and draw a circle for each hydrogen. There should be two electrons in the circle. And for each nitrogen, there must be eight electrons. 
So this is the dot and cross diagram for the hydrogen molecule, which is N2 H4. Is it uh, clear? This one, any doubt? So moving on to the next question. We have to draw dot and cross diagram to show the arrangement of outer shell electrons in nitrocell chloride. So there are two lines, so means two electron pairs should be there between them. And there's a single line between nitrogen and chlorine, so there will be a pair of electron only. So double bond, so two pairs, single bond, a single pair will be there. Then unshared electron on oxygen. Oxygen belongs to group six. So how many unshared electrons I should draw for oxygen? If it belongs to group six. So belongs to group six, it's shared two and unshared will be four. So one, two, three, four. And same way, nitrogen belongs to group 5. So group 5 shared 3, so unshared will be 2. And chlorine belongs to group 7. So group 7 shares 1, so unshared will be 6. So this is the structure of nitrocyl chloride. Next is NF3. We have to draw the structure uh, arrangement in the molecule of nitrogen trifluoride. So nitrogen, we check the group. Nitrogen belongs to group 5. So if element belongs to group 5, how many electrons it should share? Belongs to group 5. How many electrons it should share? It should share okay, 3 So it should share three electrons and how many unshared electrons will be there? So there will be two unshared electrons. And fluorine, it belongs to group seven. As it belongs to group seven, how many electrons the fluorine should share? The number of electrons. You can use your mic chat. So it share one electron. And how many unshared electrons will be there? So the remaining six unshared electrons. No, it's not necessary to mention the group number, shared and unshared. This is for you. This part, like in exam, is for you. You that is for your assistance. But if you directly know that, like looking in the periodic table as an exam, you will have the periodic table. You just check the periodic table and you work out how many it should share. That's fine. Writing this group number is not important. It's not having any marks. It's just for understanding, like you understand this, that how many electrons I should draw. So fluorine share one, nitrogen share one, fluorine share one, nitrogen share one, <laughs> fluorine shares one, nitrogen share one. Unshared on nitrogen will be two and unshared on the fluorine will be six. And you have to draw for each of them. So nitrogen trifluoride. This is a structure of nitrogen trifluoride. Then in question six, the di complete a diagram to show ions present in sodium uh, as a user positive for sodium and negative for chloride ion. So this is a lattice, which is a regular arrangement of oppositely charged ions. So if we have a positive, then there will be negative, negative, then positive, positive, then negative. And same way, if this is positive, this will be negative. 
negative, it will be positive, positive, negative, negative, positive. So, oppositely charged ions, when they are arranged in a regular pattern or a manner, what we call, we call that as a lattice. So, this is an ionic lattice of sodium chloride. In question 7, fluorine exists as a diatomic molecule. Complete dot and cross diagram to show the electron arrangement in a molecule of a fluorine. So as we know, fluorine belongs to group 7. Group 7 shares 1. So if this fluorine shares 1, the other will also share 1. And unshared will be 6. Because it's a dot and cross diagram, so uh, one common mistake from students, like they use the same symbol. Maybe some student both... Uh, like uh, electrons for both fluorine atom, you use dot or maybe some use both crosses. So that's wrong. One you have to use a dot, another one is cross. Even though they are identical atoms, but this is a dot and cross diagram. So we have to represent one uh, type of electrons, one atom electrons by dot, another one is by cross. Next, complete the dot and cross diagram to show electron arrangement in a molecule of PCl3. So, <coughs> you, best thing is you check the group number. So, phosphorus belongs to group 5. As it belongs to group 5, how many electrons it should share? Group 5, how many electrons it should share? Group 5 share 3, okay. So group 5 shares 3 and unshared will be 2. And chlorine belongs to group 7. As it belongs to group 7, how many electrons it should share? It should share 1 and unshared will be 6. So chlorine share 1, phosphorus share 1, chlorine share 1, phosphorus share 1. And unshared electron on chlorine must be 7. Oh, sorry, 6. As it belongs to group 7, so 6 unshared electrons will be there. And phosphorus belongs to group 5, so group 5 shares 3 and unshared will be 2. So this is a structure dot and cross diagram for phosphorus trichloride PCL3 molecule. Magnesium and oxygen is, the magnesium oxide is formed when magnesium burns in oxygen. Complete a dot and cross diagram. So first we draw the structure for an atom. Magnesium configuration is 2A2 and oxygen configuration is 2,6. So first shell, two electrons, second shell, eight, and the third shell, two electrons. So it is two, eight, and two. For oxygen, first shell, two electrons, the second shell, it has six electrons. Now what happens, as we know, the met in an ionic bond, it's a transfer of electron from metal to non-metal. Metal tend to lose electron, where non-metal has a tendency to gain electron. And uh, metal will lose all the valence shell, the last shell electron, and non-metal will gain to complete octet. So these two electrons from the last shell of a magnesium are transferred to oxygen. Once a, a transfer is complete, you don't have to show these electrons with magnesium as it is being lost. So, the last shell become empty for magnesium and what is the charge? Because it lost two electrons. So, charge will be plus two. And oxygen gains two electrons, so the charge will be minus two or two minus. In ionic bonding, uh, it's important that you represent the electrons correctly, like drawing the and writing the charge as well. Is it uh, clear? This one... The magnesium oxide dot and cross diagram. Next is structural formula of ethanol is shown. You just have to complete a dot and cross diagram to show the electrons arrangement in a molecule of ethanol. So a single line represents a pair of electrons and double line represents two pairs are there. 
So between, like we can start with any, between carbon and hydrogen, there's a single bond. So if there's a single bond between them, so if hydrogen share one, carbon will share one. Hydrogen share one, carbon shares one. This also a single bond. So single bond means there will be a pair of electron between them. Between the two carbon atoms also there is a single line. So means there will be a pair of electron between them. But between the second carbon and the oxygen, there are there's a double bond. So means there should be two pairs. So if this is carbon electron, oxygen, carbon electron, oxygen. And here's a single line. So carbon and hydrogen. Now, carbon, as we know, it belongs to group four. So it's share four and unshared is zero. Hydrogen share one and unshared is zero. But oxygen, there must be unshared electrons as it belongs to group six. So element belongs to group six. It will share two and unshared will be four. So four unshared electrons on oxygen you have to draw as well. Is it uh, clear the structure of ethanol? Any doubt in this? Sir? Yes. Sir, what does the C double O double bond mean? C double bond O, this one? Yes. So what is the meaning of C double bonded with O? It means that there are four electrons between carbon and oxygen. If we have, like example, if there's a single line between carbon and oxygen, it means that there is a pair of electron or two electrons are there between them. If we have a double bond, like C double bonded with O, what does it mean? It means there should be two pairs or four electrons between carbon and oxygen. So if there's a carbon, this is the electron of carbon, then cross is representing electron of oxygen. Same thing, if this is an electron of carbon, cross is representing the electron of oxygen. So if there's a double bond, we have to show four electrons between them. If there's a single bond, we have to show two electrons between them, or we can say a pair of electrons. So this C double bonded with O means four electrons are there between carbon and oxygen. Is it uh, clear? Yes, thank you. Same way, as you can see, a molecule of ethanoic acid is there. So some places you can see a single line, some places you see a double line. Double line. So what does it mean? If there's a single line, what it shows, how many electrons should be there? Two electrons. So carbon and hydrogen. This also a single line, carbon and hydrogen, two electrons. This also single line, carbon and hydrogen, two electrons between them. Between the two carbon atoms, a single line. So means a pair of electrons or two electrons will be there. But here with carbon and oxygen, again, double bond, double covalent bond means four electrons should be there between them. So if electron of a carbon we are representing by a dot, electron of oxygen by cross. Same thing, electron of a carbon by dot and electron of oxygen by cross. So means C double bonded with O or four electrons. Same way here, in this one, like this is a double bond, but this is a single bond, CO. So if there's a single bond, we represent by a pair of electron or two electrons between them. And oxygen and hydrogen, again, there's a single bond. So we represent by a pair of electrons. Now, the next thing is drawing the unpaired electrons. How to know the unpaired electron? To check the unpaired electron, you have to check the group. Like if element belongs to group four and a non-metal can belong to group five, it can belong to group six or it can belong to group seven. So with reference to the group number, you will know how many it will share. Group share four, share four. Group five shares three. Group six share two. Group seven shares one. And how many unshared will be there? Zero for group four, two for group five, four for group six, and six for group seven. So unshared electrons are always in even number. Zero, two, four, six. So Oxygen shares two. If this oxygen shares two, so how many unshared electrons will be there? Four. So we have to draw four unshared electrons. 
on each oxygen. So this is a structure of ethanoic acid, which is having between carbon and hydrogen, there are single bonds. So means a pair of electron. But between the other oxygen and car carbon and oxygen, there is there is a double bond or means four electrons will be there between them. This four electrons. Is it uh, clear this part? So this is a structure of ethanoic acid. Then we have to draw a dot and cross diagram for hydrogen sulfide H2S. So we check yeah. hydrogen always share one and unshared will be zero, but we check a group for sulfur. Sulfur belongs to group six. So if it belongs to group six, it will share two electron and unshared will be four. So if hydrogen share one, sulfur share one, hydrogen shares one, sulfur share one. And unshared electron on the sulfur will be four. So this is a dot and cross diagram for hydrogen sulfide or H2S. Next, we have to draw the structure of ethanol. It's a similar what we did. So if there is a single line, means a pair of electrons. A single line means a pair of electrons. A single line means a pair of electrons. Again, a single line means a pair of electron. Single line between carbon and hydrogen, so means a pair of electron. But there is a double line between carbon and oxygen, so means two pairs should be there, or four electrons. And then we draw unshared electron because oxygen belongs to group six, so group six will have four unshared electrons. So how you distinguish a double bond with a single bond? When there's a double bond, it means there are four electrons between the atoms. If there's a single bond, like carbon and hydrogen have a single bond, means there are two electrons between the atoms. Is it uh, clear, the structure? Any doubt in this? The next we have to draw ionic structure of lithium nitride. Lithium nitride means lithium with nitrogen. So, if you want to draw a lithium nitride, an ionic compound, first and draw a diagram to show its formula and the charges on the ions and arrangement of valency electrons around the negative ion. So only for negative ions, uh, how the electrons are arranged, the valence shell we have to draw. So nitrogen belongs, and lithium first we identify, it's, it's an ionic compound. Ionic compound means it consists of metal and a non-metal or formed by transfer of electron. So first we have lithium Li. If you draw one lithium, the electronic configuration for the lithium first shell, it has two electrons. And the second shell, it has one electron. For nitrogen, for nitrogen, we just need a valency electrons arrangement, like means the last shell electron. So nitrogen configuration is two comma five, but we just need the last shell. So we draw the last shell electron. Valency electrons means electrons in the last shell. When they say valency electrons, valency electrons means electrons in the last shell. So how many electrons are there in the last shell that we have to draw? How we know this, we can know by it's a group number. The group number shows the valency electron. Like element belongs to group one, means it has one electron in the outermost shell. Element belongs to group two, it has two electrons. Same way, group three, Three electron, group four, four electron, group five, five electron. So nitrogen belongs to group five, so it is having five electrons. Now what happened in ionic bonding, the metal has a tendency to lose electron, non-metal gain. So lithium will lose electron, nitrogen gain. So the metal has a tendency to lose all the valence shell electrons. So this lithium 
lost one electron and nitrogen gain one, but it's not stable. Why it is not stable? Because to be stable, it must have eight electron in the outermost shell. So one, two, three, four, five, six are there. So it's not stable. So there must be another lithium around it. There should be another lithium atom around to give another electron. So electron will transfer from lithium to this. Again, nitrogen is not stable. Why it is not stable? Because still it has seven electrons in the outermost shell. It must have eight electrons. Then we draw another lithium. So nitrogen, again, it loses one and the lithium will gain, uh, sorry, lithium will lose electron, nitrogen will gain. So nitrogen gain three electron. If nitrogen gain three electron, what should be the charge of the nitrogen? It should be three minus or minus three. So nitrogen is a negative ion. And because lithium is losing electron, so it should be a positive ion. Negative ion means it's an ion which gain electron or it has extra electrons than proton. And the positive ion means it has more uh, protons than electrons. So if an atom lose electron, turn into a positive ion. Atom gain electron, turn into negative ion. So this is a structure of lithium nitride. And the formula of this compound, lithium nitride, lithium, there are three lithium, so Li3. And one nitrogen, so N will be there. So Li3N is lithium nitride. Is it uh, clear, the structure? The ionic structure of lithium nitride? Then in question 15, draw the structural formula of carbonyl chloride and uh, use circle to represent the electron of carbon, use cross to represent the electrons of chlorine and use dot to represent the electrons of oxygen. So you have to first draw the atoms. We have carbon, we have oxygen, we have chlorine and another chlorine. Now, as you can see, a single line is there between carbon and chlorine. So it means there should be two electrons or a pair of electrons. So and carbon electron we represent by a circle and the chlorine is by cross. Same way, there's another single line between carbon and chlorine. So carbon electron we represent by a circle and the chlorine electron we represent by cross. And then there are there's a double bond between carbon and oxygen. So mean there must be four electrons between them, carbon and oxygen. So carbon we represent by a circle and oxygen we represent by a dot. Then carbon by circle and oxygen by dot. Because double bond is there, so means there must be four electrons or two pairs of electrons. Then unshared electron, you have how to know unshared electron? You have to check the group number for each, like chlorine belongs to group seven. If element belongs to group 7, it's shared 1 and unshared will be 6. Oxygen belongs to group 6, group 6, shared 2 and unshared will be 4. And carbon belongs to group 4, so it's shared 4 and unshared will be 0. So for chlorine, we have to draw 6 unshared electrons, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Same thing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Carbon does not have any unshared and oxygen, there should be four unshared. So one, two, three, four. So this is a structure of carbonyl chloride, in which is having a double bond between carbon and oxygen and a single bond between carbon and chlorine. Is it uh, clear this one?
So this was a pop quiz which was related to a uh, topic ionic and covalent structures. And I have shared another pop quiz the morning today, which is related to bonding and structure as well. So solve and submit that as well.